<clears throat> Good morning. My name is Evan Antley, the Sergeant and Public Information Officer with the Casey Department of Public Safety. I'd like to welcome you here and thank you for your patience. In the beginning, we promised you daily case updates and that's what we're here to do today. Before we get into this too far, I want everyone to continue to pray for Faye Swetlick. This has been a horrible situation for our community and for our department. We want to thank you for your patience with us as a department. Yesterday was a tough day, possibly the toughest day of many law enforcement careers. Some of you have requested 911 audio from the initial report when Faye went missing. I'm happy to say that we have that for you this morning. They have been redacting personal information over the last few hours, and we will have that out to you within a few short minutes at the end of this press conference. Yesterday, you saw our investigators and agents led investigation following City of Casey municipal sanitation trucks through the neighborhood of Churchill Heights. What we were doing was emptying trash cans and looking to see what came out before it was entered into the truck. As part of that search, we located a critical item of evidence related to our investigation of bringing Faye Swetlick home. Based on that discovery, we narrowed down an area that we felt as an investigative team that we needed to go back to and look for more evidence. Director Snellgrove and her leaders were in the area planning a, a methodical, a, a, another methodical search of that area. Even though we had been there multiple times, we were going back. During the early planning stages of that search, Director Byron Snellgrove with KCDPS located the body of Faye Marie Swetlick. What we can tell you is this. Based on our investigation and based on the information, the preliminary information that we received from the coroner's office, we believe that Faye had not been in that location for a very long time at all. A short time later, just moments after locating Faye Marie Swetlick, we located a deceased male at 602 Piccadilly Square. What I'd like to do now is allow Lexington County Coroner Margaret Fisher to step up to make ID on that person. Hey everybody. First I want to say thank you. Thank you for covering this case so diligently and thank you for your patience in allowing my office and all the other law enforcement agencies to to handle business and to get the information we need. And you guys have been so patient with waiting on all of our news releases, so we really do appreciate that. Um, I'm here to identify the uh, male that was found on the scene. Um, so I'll spell his name. It's going to be a Caucasian male. He's 30 years old. His first name is Cody, C-O-T-Y. Middle name is Scott. S-C-O-T-T. -T. Last name is Taylor. T-A-Y-L-O-R. Um, he did reside at 602 Piccadilly Square. And as you know, the autopsy for him will probably be on Saturday as well. And we won't know any information on the cause of death until after the autopsy is completed. And at, at that time, we'll, I'm sure we'll do another news release and give you that information. But it's going to be Saturday, um, probably by Saturday afternoon, we'll know more about, about him. Okay? Thank you. What about the autopsy? The, um, I 
got more to give you. So there are a lot of questions out there. What I can tell you is this. The male body that was just identified as Cody Taylor was our evidence and our investigation does link these two together. I can confirm that he was a neighbor, that he was not a relative, he was not a friend, he was merely a neighbor in, that lived in Churchill Heights. At this time, I want to assure you, our community, and all of our parents out there, that there is no, we have no reason to believe that there is an active threat in the Churchill Heights community or the city of Casey as a whole. We have no suspects at this time. We have made no arrest, and we are not seeking any persons of interest as of this time. Lastly, I want to say this. Again, this has been a tragic situation for our community, for our department, and for everyone who has been following the story of Faye Marie Swetley. We want to thank the community for their tips. Without them, we may not be where we are. We want to thank that neighborhood. We went in there and turned their lives upside down. We made them late for work, we searched their homes, and we invaded their privacy. But we did it for a reason, and we had a goal. This is not the outcome we wanted, but this is where we are, and our work continues to bring justice for Faye Marie Swetley. I do have time for questions. There are some things about this investigation that I'm not going to be able to tell you about. But I do have time for questions, and we can take those now. Yes, sir, in the back. Can you say if they were, where they were both found, if they were both found inside his residence, and if so, where? I can answer that for you. So Faye Marie Swetlick, her body was located in a wooded area between her residence and the Napa Auto Parts where we did our briefings earlier in the week. The body of Cody Taylor was located at his residence. I'm not going to get into specifics, but it was it was at his residence. Yes, ma'am. Are you since there is no pending investigation with further criminal charges, um, are you able to detail the piece of evidence that you found by uh, going behind the trash truck? So I just I want to clarify. We do still have an open investigation. What we, what we are looking at is just what I gave you. Um, but, but just because we don't have any suspects now, we want to make sure that there's not anyone else involved in the disappearance of Faye Marie Swetlick. So I, I can't. I can tell you it was a critical piece of evidence and what I will confirm is this. It was a critical piece of evidence that would have been l listed on her missing persons flyer. Next question. Do you believe that Cody killed Faye? I know the investigation is very preliminary. Yeah, I, I, I can't comment on that ongoing investigation. Again, I, what I will tell you is they are linked. Can you, can you tell us where the evidence is found at all? Yes, in a trash can belonging to 602 Piccadilly Square, which is the residence of Cody Taylor. In the back. How close is his house to her house? 100 to 150 feet. So all, all in that area, there is Londonderry Square and Piccadilly Square. It's some small, uh, similar to townhomes that are right next to one another, and they, once, and they're right, I mean, those two lanes are right next to each other. Yes, sir. Did Cody He has no criminal history, and he was not known to law enforcement. Down here. Uh, I'm wondering if you could tell me whether you believe his to also be a homicide, and if you have a date of birth for him. 
Yes, so we're. I'm not going to stand up here and speculate on his cause of death at this time. We're going to wait to cooperate with the forensic pathologist before we say anything about that. I do have a date of birth for him. It is 3 9 of 1989. Like I said, we'll know more about his cause of death tomorrow. Pardon me, Emily. Can you talk about uh, you all knocked on doors, you searched home. Had you searched Mr. Taylor's home before you found or before law enforcement found us? We had talked to Mr. Taylor. We had been inside his home. Absolutely, we had. Yes. Was the body of Faye buried, or was it just like in a I'm, parcel? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on the condition of her body. That's. I appreciate your question, but I, I feel like if I had, it'd be insensitive at this time. Right here, yes, ma'am. Linda, you say that there's a definitive link. Is it uh, DNA? N what I'm telling you is, is that part of our invest that evidence in our investigation links these two. They are not, it's not Faye and then a totally separate case. They are linked. But you can't tell us that. I, I can't, I'm not going to give you the specific details on how. I don't want to, um, we're still, what I can ask you for is this. We want more information about Cody Taylor starting at 344 Monday afternoon up until the time that we, um, announced that we had found his body. The time for one more than these guys. Can you tell us how the family has been so far? How, how are they holding up and everything? You know, I, unfortunately, I personally have not talked to them. But what I can tell you is this, is that we have victim specialists with them. My heart breaks for that family. As a parent, how do you go through that? We have a preschool not too far from here, and kids are out there playing on the playground as we pulled in. And as officers, we stopped and waved and made sure those kids saw us and smiled. I, I couldn't begin to answer that. Thank you so much. We will continue pushing out information. Follow Casey Public Safety's Facebook page. We will continue to get you this information as it becomes available and as our investigation allows. Thank you so much for being here.